All right, hey everyone, and welcome to another caffeinated episode of Garden Frugal. I'm Clint, and uh, I welcome you guys back. Well, hopefully you're coming back. And uh, if this is your first time, welcome. Uh, and uh, definitely go back and check out some of my other videos. There's going to be a lot more to come. So uh, I put this in your guys' hands this uh, time to choose what video you guys wanted to see. And you guys uh, chose as your number one pick, uh, do-it-yourself compost tea brewer. So that's what we're going to do today. i got to cover a lot. Um, so I'm going to try to talk fast and go over a lot of things. Just because instead of just telling you this is how I do it, I want to tell you why this is how I do it or why you do it a certain way and that way I can kind of give you guys some knowledge as well and you can come up with your own decisions or modify it or do whatever you want with it. So, you know, compost tea, we still don't know a lot or everything about compost tea, but we do know it's good. So, basically compost tea is taking your compost and all the good stuff that's in your compost and multiplying it, you know, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 10,000 times over and uh, getting a super concentration of all of the good stuff um, in a liquid format that you can distribute on your garden. So, um, your compost tea is only going to be as good as your compost. So you want to use a good source of compost. The best source of compost is going to be stuff that you make yourself. Um, and then as a second source, if you're going to collect or use different compost, uh, the best thing to do is try to get multiple sources. So. If you're going to buy bags of compost, try to buy different bags or multiple sources of compost, mix it all up, and that way you get a different bacteria from different kinds of compost. So, compost tea, you're going to be multiplying um, your bacteria and your fungi, your beneficial fungi. So, um, the best thing to do you know, to, to multiply them or to, to have them reproduce is to keep them happy. So... Um, first things first, this is off of a Bruce Dooley um, design. You can Google him, find him. He, he's come up with this design. Long story short, he competed in a, in a competition basically. Um, they analyzed compost under a microscope um, to judge how good the compost was. And uh, he didn't win, he came in second, but his design was basically off this five gallon bucket and cost uh, less than $30 to make. And the guy that won used an eight to ten thousand dollar compost tea brewer. So, either way, this bucket you're going to make some really really good compost tea, um, and you don't need to go spend ten thousand dollars to do it. So, this is what I used last year. Um, I made uh, two batches of it, dumped it on my garden, uh, on my tomatoes, and. Uh, for those of you that live in the Pacific Northwest, you know we didn't have a very good spring last year. We didn't really have a spring at all. We had a summer and our growing season's already short. And uh, you know, all my friends' tomatoes didn't really produce and didn't get very big. And all I used, I didn't use any organic fertilizers or anything. I used compost and compost tea. I made two batches, dumped it on them. My tomatoes were over seven feet tall. I had to end up cutting the tops off of them and uh, to get them to concentrate on the rest of the fruit before the end of the season and I probably got 30 to 40 pounds worth of tomatoes per plant and uh, I actually grew them in containers 12 inch 12 inch squared containers so um, this stuff obviously does wonders it makes great compost tea and uh, I don't think I need better compost tea because I don't think I need my tomatoes any bigger so um, this is what we got going here I just got myself a five gallon bucket and uh, for those of you that can see on there, the Ace Hardware, I do recommend really quick buying uh, as much as you can through Ace Hardwares. The only reason why is most Ace Hardwares are locally owned. So uh, it's much better than going to a big box store or anything else because, um, you know, at least for me, my money is going back into, uh, you know, someone local and probably back into my community and stuff like that. So um, you've probably heard the phrase, think global, buy local. So um, enough on that. But uh Anyways, I've got a five gallon bucket um, and then I got this Petco air pump here. So I like this Petco one, it's about 17 bucks. I don't know if you can see, it's got two different ports that come out. Um, 17 bucks comes with the pump, it comes with um, two packages of tubing inside. Um, so you don't need to go out and buy tubing, it's got enough to make this. It comes with these two blue valves here. These are basically one-way um, check valves and it just prevents water from going up into the pump and damaging your pump. Um, it also comes with 
I can find them here for you. It also comes with these two little one inch um, air stones. So it's a great deal for 17 bucks. You get the pump, the tubing, the check valves, and uh, two air stones. So the only other thing you'll need to go out and buy, um, you'll need to get um, some tubing, or not tubing, sorry, a, a T. And uh, you can usually get two T's for a dollar in a package, or you know, they're, they're definitely very cheap, but you're gonna need two T's, and then you're gonna need to go get, um, I get these four inch um, air stones, and I get two of those. So basically I have two T's, I have the tubing, um, and as you can see, just like this, I come off from the pump, off one port off the pump, into a T, and I go to these two one inch stones, and then I'll go from the other port into a T to two of these four inch stones. And you put the, these big ones down in the bottom of the bucket. And then the next thing you need to go out and get is a one gallon paint strainer bag. And this I did get at a big box store. Um, they come in a package of two or three and um, they look basically just like this. They're cheap, they're a dollar or two for a package. And um, they're kind of elastic -y at the top. And this is what we're gonna throw our compost in. It, it depends. You can just throw it right in the bucket um, if you're not going to spray it. I just pour mine right on the garden so I could do that. Um, or you can put it in this thing and it just makes it easy because you can put your compost in the bag. Um, and then when I'm actually brewing it, the two small one inch um, air stones I put in the bag with the compost. And then the other two in the bottom of the bucket. And I just leave it in there and, and let it brew. So. Um, I guess first things first is the water. Um, best water you can get if you got pond water or something close by you, you can you can use that. Or if you're going to use city water, um, you need to get the chlorine out of it. So city water, they're either going to have chlorine or chloramine. Um, not too many places have the chloramine, but uh, you, you know you can probably call your local utilities and find out. But most of them will have chlorine, and the chlorine will actually. Uh, evaporate on its own. So you can just set the water out in a bucket for 24 hours and the chlorine will evaporate off or you can put it in the bucket and turn the uh, bubblers on and the air pump for about an hour and that's long enough or enough to get that uh, chlorine out of your water. Uh, if you do have chloramine in your water you will have to get those drops um, at the pet store that you you know if you would use to get the chloramine out um, just like if you're going to put it in your fish tank and stuff. So it's it's completely harmless. It works good. You can still buy those drops. You just dump them in there and it'll get rid of the uh, chloramine. Um, but like I said, most places just have chlorine. So um, I'm going to keep going here. I'm going to have to break this up into uh, multiple segments. So this will be part one. So definitely uh, I'll include a link and check out part two. And we'll continue on this compost tea brewer. We'll be right back.